Hi everyone, welcome to the demo on Philanthropedia's custom research. My name is Diana Hands and I'm the Senior Marketing Manager here at GuideStar. A few housekeeping items before we begin. First, we're going to be live tweeting during today's presentation using the hashtag custom research. You'll see it in the presentation, so please join the conversation on Twitter. Secondly, we're happy to take questions from all of you during the presentation. We'll try to answer as many as we can before the time is up, but to submit a question, you can use the question feature on the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. If we can't get to all of your questions before our time is up, we'll post more of the answers on our blog soon. And finally, we'll send you all an email with a link to the presentation and today's recording in a few days. I'm now happy to introduce my colleague, Jasmine Morrow, the manager of Philanthropedia Research. Thanks so much, Diana. Um, so, hello to everyone, and, and thanks so much for joining us for the custom research presentation. Um, so, as Diana mentioned, uh, my name is Jasmine Morrow. I'm the research manager for Philanthropedia Research, and I oversee running the research process from start to finish and working closely with the custom research clients. Um, and thanks so much to Diana for running this webinar today. So today, I'm excited to introduce to you Philanthropedia and the work that we do. In particular, the goal of this webinar is to share the information about our custom research products with you. Um, it's a research opportunity that's particularly well-suited for community organizations and foundations, and even individuals with an interest in local causes to sponsor. So we'll talk about the value of this sort of research, how the process works, a little more about our track record and what Philanthropedia has accomplished to date, some examples of our past custom research projects, and why this is a particularly important tool. And then we'll leave some room at the end for any questions that you might have uh, about this work. All right, so uh, let's get started. And first, just an introduction to Philanthropedia. We started Philanthropedia in 2009 because we realized that one of the hardest things to do in the nonprofit sector was to accurately measure the impact of an, that an organization was having. And yet to us, when deciding where to make a donation, we felt that it was the most important piece of information we wanted to know. Was the organization actually fulfilling their mission? Were they helping people? Were they making a positive impact? We didn't want to give to just any organization. We wanted to give to the organizations that were the most effective. Knowing that individuals across the nonprofit sector and even individuals within the same cause area measure impact so differently, we came up with a crowdsourcing methodology to leverage the wisdom of experts across the entire social causes so that we could uncover which nonprofits were the best at fulfilling their mission and making a difference. Later in our presentation, we'll talk more in detail about who these experts are and how our methodology works. In April 2011, GuideStar acquired Philanthropedia so that our research could reach and influence a wider audience. GuideStar believes in helping donors make informed decisions, and Philanthropedia is a great resource for donors to learn more about some of the best nonprofits out there. Philanthropedia researches organizations um, and our research is independently run, and it, it serves as an independent research arm of, philanthropy, of GuideStar. And so the results of these efforts are integrated into the GuideStar database. So now let me tell you more about how custom research can benefit your community. Over the years, we expanded our research locally in the Bay Area of California, where we're located, nationally, and even internationally. And through that experience, we realized that different causes resonate more with different communities. For example, the arts might be of greater interest to folks in the Los Angeles area, but the environment might be more important to communities in Minnesota. This led us to develop custom research opportunities for communities across the country. Organizations like yours, often community foundations in particular, are extraordinary, extraordinarily in tune with the interest of your community members and the needs of those individuals and how those can change over time. 
And so you have a great understanding of what donors care about and how those interests can shift. Uh, you likely realize also that research can be very time and labor intensive. What we specialize in is running independent research and gathering detailed information about highly effective nonprofits. Working together, Philanthropedia can run independent research to uncover data that benefits your community, leaving you with more time to do what you do best, connecting with your donors and your community, and to provide them with services to facilitate their philanthropy. Increasingly, donors are asking for more information about impact and effectiveness. This is specifically what our research focus is. Foundations and community organizations can use this impact-focused data to augment their data that they already have about communities or about organizations in their community. In addition to providing detailed analysis about the impact nonprofits are having in the community, we also collect data about organizational strengths such as leadership and financial management, which might contribute to the success of these nonprofits. By collecting these data, we aim to look beyond the more one-dimensional evaluation metrics, such as overhead ratio, to provide a more nuanced, holistic perspective about a nonprofit. We feel that Philanthropedia's methodology allows us to find answers that may be less apparent than through other research methods. For example, we recognize that even great nonprofits could still improve. So we take this opportunity in our research to collect additional data on how these high-impact nonprofits could further improve. This is actually one of the hardest pieces of information to collect about nonprofits. And because we ask for this constructive feedback in the context of a recommendation about a great nonprofit, we're actually able to collect some useful feedback that can help nonprofits improve their practice even more. Through our research, we often collect recommendations on more than 100 nonprofits in a particular cause. While many individuals within that cause may be familiar with some of the nonprofits that are recommended, we uncover lesser known organizations as well. And these may fulfill a niche or specific needs within the community. And lastly, we recognize that impact is a backward looking metric, and organizations with a longer track record may likely emerge um, more often in this process. Therefore, we separately ask experts to recommend promising startup organizations that have the potential to have a big impact in the future. This dimension is particularly appealing to some segments of donors who wish to fund innovation in their community. What's additionally important about our research is that we can act as a neutral third party to conduct research in your community and to provide insight into the nonprofit landscape. You and your constituents can trust that our research is unbiased. We have no agenda. And our research is fueled entirely by experts in the field. Because nonprofit impact is so difficult to measure, we use the experience of professionals to identify effective organizations. We believe that experts working in the field have the best insight on how effective nonprofits are. We consider foundation professionals one segment of our expert pool. Foundation professionals' core responsibility is to evaluate research organizations to fund. Therefore, we leverage their knowledge and expertise to uncover these organizations. We also think researchers, academics, and think tank professionals offer a valuable perspective. These experts often specialize in the cause area we're serving and have researched trends over time. They know which, ex which approaches um, have been proven to be most effective and are in tune with or which organizations are on the ground implementing these programs. Another critical expert segment for us is the actual leaders of nonprofit organizations. These leaders usually have many years of experience working within a cause area. They often have worked for multiple organizations and are aware of peers in their field that are doing similar work. It's important to note that our experts are not allowed to recommend organ organizations for which they work. So these nonprofit leaders must look outside of their own organization to contribute to our research. Finally, we also have many other experts who are working in the field, such as government officials, journalists, consultants, and others who may be deeply involved in the work of nonprofits in their community. The experts are at the core of our research. 
and they're the professionals working in your community, engaged in the nonprofit sector at the highest level. Our, our research leverages the expertise on your behalf uh, and so that we can provide trustworthy, independent data to your donors and help direct donation dollars to some of the most effective organizations in your community. So um, now that I've given you a high-level look at Philanthropedia and this product, I'm going to give you some details of, and logistics about how the process works. So I'll start by walking you through the research process from idea conception to revealing the results. We start by working with you to identify a cause. You'll likely come to the table with ideas, and this stage is to get clear on that, as well as to make sure that we're defining the cause in such a way that we can get really robust results. The questions that we answer in this stage are things like, are there enough experts in the field, so forth. Second, we enter into preliminary research by conducting over-the-phone interviews with top experts in the field. This step allows us to gain a better understanding of the cause area and define the scope of the research. It also informs the expert list that we compile in the next stage of the process. Minnesota Philanthropy Partners, which is a community foundation consortium that we'll talk about later in the presentation, chose to be very involved in this stage uh, by connecting us with sector experts that they'd already identified through previous work. Since they had a strong understanding of the field, this helped to ensure that our research included the perspectives of experts who were trusted in the community and that we didn't miss out on components of the cause that were of particular interest to Minnesota partners. This is a great example of how you can tailor this research to fit your needs. So that brings me to the third step. And that's creating the expert list. Through systematic online research, we compile a comprehensive and representative list of about 600 to 800 experts for a cause that we research. To refresh your memory, we define experts as foundation professionals, nonprofit senior staff, academics and researchers, and other professionals such as consultants, government officials, and journalists who have insight into the field. When we're putting this list together, we think about diversity along various axes, including focus area within the cause, types of profession, and geographic location. Ultimately, we aim to develop a diverse, representative, and independent sample of experts. So we send out an online survey via email to the experts on the list, and we ask them to recommend high-impact nonprofits. Experts are expected to provide a qualitative analysis about the impact of these organizations, other organizational strengths, and also their areas for improvement. Uh, experts are also given the opportunity to recommend promising startups. It's, an op it's important to note that experts are not allowed to recommend their own organizations where they work. To keep the we keep the survey open for about six weeks, and during this time, we call the experts to encourage their participation and answer any questions that they may have. Across our 30 causes, uh, our average response rate is about 15%, which is very high for online surveys. Our response rates have ranged from 5% to as high as 30%. After we collect the responses from the first survey, we invite only the experts who participated to complete a second survey. And the second survey is an important step in vetting the results, as it gives the experts a chance to comment on all of the organizations up for further consideration. This survey invites them to tell us to what extent they agree with their colleagues' recommendations that these are among the highest impact nonprofits in the field. So next, we analyze the data from both, from both surveys and we come up with a list of high impact nonprofits for that issue based on the consensus from the experts. Plus, we perform data cleanup, standardization, and analysis from the collected expert comments for each of these nonprofits. We wrap up by presenting the research results to you and your organization and handing off the supporting materials. Just as with 
Oh, excuse me. Uh, just as with our, all of our research, the results are made public on Philanthropedia's and GuideStar's websites. And you're also welcome to share the results in any way that you'd like, internally or externally. So that's our general methodology and process. And from start to finish, the process is about 20 weeks. So now that you have a good understanding of our process, I'll walk you through some of the product details. So when we talk about purchasing the Philanthropedia custom research product, what does that mean? Well, for starters, we can offer to conduct research on your behalf for two, three, or four causes of your choosing. And these are run simultaneously within that same 20-week process that we discussed. And from that research, 10 to 20 expert identified high impact nonprofits will emerge for each cause. Since the methodology is consensus based, this number does fluctuate, so we can't guarantee an exact number of top nonprofits. So, one of the things that I think is great about this research is the rich expert comments. You'll receive detailed information on what impact these organizations are having, their organizational strengths, and how they could improve. And these comments are the pieces of information that a collection of experts decided were the most important to note. And collectively, they can really help paint a picture of a nonprofit overall. While our prices can vary depending on your timeline and other factors, we start this product offering at $20,000 for two causes, $25,000 for three causes, and $30,000 for four. So that's a brief overview of the product, and I'd be happy to dive into more detail or answer uh, particular questions in the Q&A section. Now I'd like to spend some time looking at Philanthropedia's work and what makes us uniquely qualified to offer this product. Since Philanthropedia's founding, we've worked with a wide array of causes that range from animal rights to global water sanitation issues. And you can see here that to date, 3,012 experts have participated in our research, providing reviews on 560 top nonprofits across 36 causes. Having applied our research at the local, national, and international levels, We've gained a lot of insight on how to mold our methodology to unique situations and produce strong, viable results. So I'd like to introduce you to Minnesota Philanthropy Partners, who we've now partnered with three times. Minnesota Partners is a progressive consortium of community foundations, which supports the St. Paul Foundation, Minnesota Community Foundation, and 1,600 other affiliates across Minnesota. The organization has utilized our services as part of their strategy to bring vetted, targeted information to their community of donors. When Philanthropedia began offering custom research, they reached out to us because they saw an opportunity to dive really deeply into the causes that Minnesotans care about. Having had a positive experience with us, and more importantly with the reception of the research, Minnesota Partners has decided to contract with us for a second and now a third time. Now let's take a closer look at the research itself. In October 2011, we released the results of Minnesota environment research. In total, 178 local environmental experts recommended 18 high-impact nonprofits working in the environment in Minnesota. Here we highlighted a range of environmental nonprofits, which focused on conservation, advocacy, direct service, and more. In April 2012, we released a second set of custom research results around workforce development. 100 experts working in Minnesota's workforce development field recommended 18 high-impact local nonprofits. Um, it's great to note the variety of organizations that were highlighted through this research. Some nonprofits that emerged focused on specific populations relevant in Minnesota's cultural landscape. Others are youth-focused, income-focused, or serving entrepreneurs. While we ran the environment and workforce development causes concurrently and completed this research in May of 2011, Minnesota Partners wanted to wait to release the results to coincide with their flag flagship publication, MinSites. 
This is another example of how we can accommodate the needs of your organization as we perform this work. Once Minnesota Partners was ready to release them, they published the results in MinSight in a very creative way. And I'll show you an example in a few minutes. Um, and we published the results on our website and GuideStar's website. Um, the next causes are great examples of really tailoring the research to fit your needs. Minnesota Partners was specifically interested in looking not just at arts and culture and healthy food as broad categories, but instead they were interested in identifying organizations that increase access for populations that are traditionally cut off from these opportunities and services. So in October 2012, we released the results for access to arts and culture. And later this month, we'll be releasing the results for access to healthy food. And in those causes, you can see that 124 ex um, experts in access to arts and culture identified 18 high-impact nonprofits and 99 experts working in access to healthy foods in Minnesota recommended 15 outstanding nonprofits in that cause. I'm also happy to announce that we're currently uh, running two more rounds of research. Um, and we have those underway for Minnesota Partners now. And so we're exploring mental health and educational support for at-risk youth. And you can see just the wide diversity um, in the, the causes that we're exploring. And those results will be available next year. Moving on, we'll explore what makes this product a great tool for organizations like yours. We believe that custom research product is specifically useful since it lends itself so well to the work that many of you already do. Um, it's likely that you know from your own experience that donors are increasingly interested in using information to guide their giving. GuideStar, in collaboration with Hope Consulting, recently published a study called Money for Good. And that study found that more donors could be influenced to research before giving if they had better information about nonprofits. And additionally, one of the most important pieces of information that donors want, but is the least available, is data about nonprofit effectiveness. Philanthropedia's research solves this very problem. This research process is also a great way to compare sometimes very different organizations. Um, it can be difficult to evaluate advocacy and direct service organizations alongside each other. But looking at them from the perspective of having an impact on the cause as a whole helps to boil down the criteria and look at them um, in terms of long-term results. Our research tends to uncover great nonprofits doing work in a variety of different ways for the sector. Similarly, this methodology offers donors choice. We curate a list of organizations deemed by experts to have the highest impact. That narrows the field down to a manageable number of nonprofits to invest in. From there, other information that we provide on leadership, expert comments, and financials can shape the decision that works best for each individual. Our philosophy at Philanthropedia has always been to encourage donors to choose a cause with their heart and then choose an organization with their mind. We provide the details necessary to choose from a variety of outstanding organizations. An important feature of custom research is that it's flexible, obviously in cause and location, but also in the way that you use the research results to benefit your organization and your community. One way to consider using this research is for your organization to consider funding or expanding into a new program or cause area. Perhaps your foundation hasn't explored arts and culture in your community and you have a new donor who wants to develop a new funding area. You can leverage Philanthropedia's custom research to uncover some ways of some of the key experts in the field. It can also help to generate an overview of the kinds of nonprofits doing work in the space. 
And of course, this research also uncovers some of the most effective nonprofits, which may lead to a starting point when looking for collaboration opportunities. Another great way to leverage this research is to help your organization make internal programming decisions. Perhaps you're already working in education, but you want to understand how experts in the community perceive great organizations at work. This research can allow you to learn about new organizations, startups, and possibly new areas within a cause to consider exploring. You can identify organizations with complementary services or approaches for collaborative opportunities. You can also use this research to learn more about something that's been coming up a lot in the news or that your constituents have been requesting more information about. You may not decide to create a whole new program area around it, but you might want to provide some resources to your community of donors. The environment was a timely and relevant topic for many Minnesotans, so Minnesota partners wanted to provide their community with more information about the latest work that environmental nonprofits were doing in their state. You can also choose to share the research results externally. You may wish to publish the results directly um, in a variety of ways on your website or in print. You may also consider the possibility of creating other kinds of special resources just for your community based on the results. So here you can see an example of Minnesota philanthropy partners' work. They chose to pull parts and pieces of the research that was commissioned uh, to create an amazing publication for their community. And you can see here that they took various recommended organizations and tailored the results in a way that resonates with their constituents by highlighting organizations based on the type of work that they do. So you can see that if you care about advocacy, there are certain organizations that you can give to, um, and energy, so forth. So you can see here that there are a variety of ways to leverage this research and to provide timely, important information about highly effective nonprofits in your community. And we're happy to work with you to tailor the integration of our results with your organization in whatever way works best for you. Um, hopefully, this has given you an understanding of the Philanthropedia Custom Research product and just a few of the many ways that you can leverage this tool. So, uh, with that, I'd like to conclude the formal part of the presentation and open up the floor for questions. Thank you, Jasmine. How are the experts paid to participate in this survey? Uh, so that's a great question. Um, actually, none of the experts who participate in the survey are paid at all. Um, we, in general, experts uh, are compelled to participate. Uh, because they care about the, the cause as a whole and really want to be able to influence the way that donors understand the cause and um, point money toward strong nonprofits. And how do you decide which causes to research on behalf of a foundation? Um, so in general, what we do is we, we like to take as much input as possible from the organization that we're working uh -huh. with. So. Together, we develop um, the, the cause area. And so mostly, we're looking to make sure that there are enough experts in the field who uh, will be able to provide insight and that there are enough um, organizations to, that, that can be spoken to and, and those sorts of things. And do you recommend partnering with other foundations to sponsor the research? Um, I, I think that that's a great idea. Um, Minnesota Philanthropy Partners is also a really great example of that. They're a consortium of foundations as opposed to just one particular organization. Um, and so I think that partnering with other organizations, be it foundations or uh, think tanks, um, not only helps with things like the cost burden, but it also can just create uh, a bond across the sector in your community. Great. I think we have one last question that came in, and it's, uh, can you give an example of what happens in the conversations with the experts? Sure, that's a great question. Um, so it's usually it's about a 30-minute conversation, and we're asking them to define the cause as they see it. 
Um, so we would ask them things uh, about trends in the sector or uh, gaps along the continuum of service. We'd ask them what the, the landscape of nonprofits looks like and how they interact, things like that. Great. Well, that is all that came in so far. So thank you, Jasmine, so much for taking the time to be here today. We really appreciate it. And for more information, you can go to myphilanthropedia.org. And Jasmine, any last comments? Um, just thanks so much for participating, and um, I'm happy to answer any questions um, beyond this, so feel free to, to email or contact me. Um, my contact information is here. Great, and that concludes this presentation. Have a good day.